these are called putties. And if you happen to be a daring adventurer or an intrepid soldier, perhaps uh, cutting through the dense forests of the Congo or dr uh, traipsing over the wide expanses of the South African veldt, uh, or perhaps even having to slog through the muddy fields of Flanders, these may well just be your best friend. Now, putties have been used by all sorts of different nations and all sorts of different armies throughout many different time periods, uh, although they're probably most iconic to the uh, latter half of the 19th century, you know, the age of imperialism, scramble for Africa, uh, and then of course by many different nations in the uh, beginning of the 20th century and the First World War, particularly again for those muddy fields in Flanders. Uh, what they are effectively is, is kind of like gaiters in the 18th century. They are a kind of leg wrap that is designed to protect your feet and your legs while on the march, and particularly while on a long and harsh campaign. So, without further ado, let me put on the first set of putties here and you can see how it all functions. Uh, now, first things first, it's important to mention that uh, there are a lot of different styles or different methods, different ways of putting on these sorts of things. Um, I think it was the French had a very particular method by which like the, the front of them are crisscrossing against itself, uh, all sort of, sorts of different overly complicated methods. Uh, for our purposes today, I'm just going to do it in a very simple fashion. Uh, what I want to do is just start, you know, just a little bit over where the uh, where the trousers end there on the uh, top of the leg, roll it down over top of the shoe, over top of, uh, you know, about half the lacing there, three quarters of the lacing, and then you want to twist the things around and you want to, while making sure to keep this more or less flat, wrap around, oh, there we are wrap around the leg. It's been a long, or around the foot rather, around the ankle. It's been a long while since I put these sorts of things on, so maybe a little bit messy, but that's okay. It's all about practicality in the end, not necessarily being perfectly nice and neat. You wrap it around the bottom of the shoe. There we go, and you can see how it's covering up most of the lacing there. It's not actually on top of, you know, where the boot is meeting my ankle. It's a little bit lower than that because we want to make sure that that's all nice and sealed up, as you'll see. I continue wrapping it around the bottom a few times. There we go. That should do nice and tight. And on every pass over, I'm going to begin working my way up a little bit more and more. So that way, as the fabric is crossing over my leg, I'm getting multiple overlapping layers going down. It's supposed to be tight enough to wear you know, it's uh, protecting the leg. You'll see what I mean. Nice and tight. You want to be very, very snug, but not so much that it's restricting blood flow. That's when you, uh, you might imagine you're going to run into a bit of trouble if you're starting to restrict the blood flow to your legs. And you can see as I'm working my way up here, what I'm effectively doing is turning my low boot, you know, my, my ankle high boots into kind of like a high boot, something that's going to reach up all the way, as you'll soon see, to around my knee level. Now, of course, this does beg the question, well, why don't you just wear, you know, knee-length boots or calf-high boots like the, uh, you know, Soviet or German jack boots and whatnot? Well, if you do have access to those, I will tell you, they're certainly an awful lot faster to slip on and off than uh, these sorts of things are. Uh, you can kind of tell already that uh, if I want to take off my shoes, it's going to be rather, well, um, inconvenient to do so, to say the least. going to have to unravel all this and then, you know, unlace the things at the bottom. But, uh... The thing about those very high boots is, is something tells me that they're going to be a little bit pricier. See, um, not only do you have to make the actual boot itself, but then all that extra leather going all the way up to the side of the leg. And, and normally they only ever really reach to around this kind of height. They don't usually get so high as these sorts of putties might get. That's an awful lot of extra leather, an awful lot of extra cost thrown into the production of the boot. Whereas you have a you know simple, much lower boot here, less material, and then you use a simple strap or a simple, um, you know, bit of bit of cloth, bit of wool to wrap around the leg, it's an awful lot cheaper, I should imagine, to manufacture. I don't know that for certain, but I imagine that that's the case. And what's more is that you'll also note that they're an awful lot tighter doing things this way than those high boots ever would be. You see, while a high boot is going to be, yes, it is going to be, of course, a perfectly sealed unit all the way up until the boot does end, well, there's going to be a gap at the top of that boot, and it's only going to protect to get about half that, uh, the lower half of the leg there, whereas the putties can reach all the way up to the top, and it's very, very tight, very, very form-fitting all along the way. Putties do not have to be fitted for the individual. One size fits all. I have, you know, very, very skinny legs and relatively short legs as well, but the same size putty will fit me 
as will fit anyone else. Just on myself, it's going to be a little bit thicker because I'm overlapping a bit more, and it's going to reach a little bit higher up the leg. On a guy that's a little bit heavier, maybe a little bit taller, um, it's going to reach less high up, but it'll still serve the same function. Whereas with boots, well, you need to make sure that they're more or less sized to the individual. This way you have less where you're required for sizing. A pair of putties will fit anyone across the board. And what's more is it will fit them very, very well. Note again exactly how tight I am able to get these things. Now in order to seal it off at the top, you can see I have sort of a extra bit of a, sort of a strap here. Wrap it around the top as many times as it'll go. Again, I'm a rather small fella, so it'll wrap around quite a few times. You want to take the strap and tuck it inside itself, sort of pass it underneath, pull it on through. Sort of like tying, a, you know, it, it's sort of like you're knotting it off at the very top just to make sure that it's nice and secure. Then once it's passed on through, what I like to do over the top again and then behind that first pass. And then once more over top, underneath, in front of where the first two went. So there you go. You have basically, you know, not really a, uh, a very tight knot, but because of the pressure of the whole thing, you know, it'll, it'll keep it up quite well. And then you can just tuck in any extra that you have just behind there so it's not flapping all around. And there you go. You have just converted your low boot, your very, very low boot, one that only, you know, reaches up to about the ankle, and you've made it into what is effectively well, like a, like a jackboot. Now, I could have done a better job as far as, um, you know, keeping the trousers down and more taut so that way they don't bag and bunch as much at the top here, but, you know, that's acceptable, and this way I have a lot of mobility. Now, a very important thing as well when you're tying the putties is to make sure you're not going above the actual knee because uh, you can tell here that it's, you know, it's very, very stiff. It's a bit more difficult. I can't really bend my ankle all too much here uh, because of the pressure keeping everything nice and tight and taut. Uh, if that's over top of the knee, then you're adding a lot of constraint, a lot of unnecessary discomfort there, uh, something that you want to avoid when you're on a campaign. And there's another added benefit to uh, this overall system beyond the fact that uh, you can use one set of putties for any man on the field, uh, that they're a lot tighter and more secure in a way than those higher boots are going to be. Uh, also being the actual thickness of the material behind it all. You know, if you are going through, you know, rough, craggy, rocky terrain, uh, these things are going to protect not only your feet in that they're going to prevent things from getting inside of your boots, inside of your shoes, like gaiters and whatnot in the earlier time periods would be doing. Uh, also, the thickness is going to prevent things from, you know, cutting and tearing into your leg. Uh, you know, it, it's not exactly going to, uh, to stop barbed wire in its tracks, but at the very least, it'll be um, harder for things to cut through this material than it would be just the regular uh, trousers just above them. So you're protecting your your legs, your boots, and your trousers, not only from mud and dirt and debris, but you're protecting it from cuts. You're protecting it from wire and stones and, and other sorts of things like that. Uh, again, very, very durable and very, very simple as far as the investment is concerned to supply these to every single soldier on the field. So with that, I will throw the other set of putties on here. Hopefully do a little bit of a nicer job of it now that I've gone through the process again. You also note that the uh, the beginning portion, you know, getting it started tends to be the, the most awkward part just because you're not dealing with, um, you know, a, a bit of material that's stuck on one side, but you have to hold it up manually as you go around. But then once you get things started off and you no longer have to hold it in place, it becomes an awful lot uh, easier to just wrap it piece by piece around the leg. Now it is also very easy, as I started to do a little bit there, I think, to um, not pass over you know, the, the material itself uh, enough and, and sort of to go too high up. And then by the time you reach up to your knee, you have all this leftover material. And either you just have to wrap it up a little bit uh, more up at the top there, or you have to start over. But uh, again, you want to make sure above all else, like my, you know, my knee is right there. Uh, that's where the bend is taking place. Uh, I don't want to go beyond this point. Otherwise, it will be rather inconvenient, rather awkward on the march. Be walking like a robot everywhere you go. There we go. And these, this one looks a little bit better, I think, overall. So again, I wrap it up at the top. There, and this one wound up at the correct spot as well. You can tell that I used the material a little bit uh, better this time around. 
And the remarkable thing about this rapping style is that they really do hold up. They, they do, in fact, stay up. Uh, it looks as though it might, you know, unravel fairly easily. You know, something at the top here gets snagged on something, and then they just all flutter down. But, you know, it's not even finished being, you know, tied up there or anything. It's just, it's staying up by its own, you know, pressure, so to say, all along the way. It's supporting itself as it goes. I don't know any of the science behind it but it is quite impressive just how well these things work. Now, you want to make sure that the putties are made of a very thick, very durable kind of wool. You know, uh, you can order putties from people like Soldier of Fortune and whatnot, uh, but I would not recommend that just because they don't usually make them out of the thicker material that you need. Whereas this is one of the pieces of equipment that you need to be really most durable of all, just because of the use of the function they're serving that they're doing. So. There you go. So yeah, I did a little bit better here as far as there's not as much material around the knee as on this leg. Uh, they're about at the same level as you can see, but functionally they're both going to serve the exact same purpose. They are protecting my feet, they are protecting my legs while on the march. And as well I dare say they look rather smart. So those are putties, nice, strong, Victorian and Edwardian uh, legging protection and whatnot. Uh, but don't just take my word for it, because there is in fact a reason why I am getting all dressed up in all this stuff today. Uh, you see, I wanted to go on a walk today, uh, and unfortunately it was raining not so very long ago. And so I realized that, well, the trail that I normally like to go on, um, is not exactly going to be in the nicest of states. It's probably going to be a little bit muddy, and uh, there's going to be some areas where it's just completely washed over, like like creeks and whatnot. Um, so I'm not exactly going to be going with, you know, my, my trainers or something like that, and, uh, nor is it even appropriate that I just wear a pair of boots along that, wa that march, because, you know, things are going to get inside, my, my feet are going to be wet, I'm going to be miserable. Oh, I'm a reenactor! I'll just throw on the appropriate equipment, you know, if it was good enough for the men in the trenches, it'll be good enough for my evening stroll, uh, and, uh, and I can get going. So I figured I would bring you all along on that walk so I can show off exactly, uh, you know, where and how these things are so very practical. So. Off to the trail. You can see just over here a sort of little uh, ramshackle, uh, hastily put together, jury rigged uh, dam as people attempted to cross across the way without getting their feet wet. You know, that, that horrible sinking feeling when clunk and you feel the water just seeping into those uh, unsecured, those silly uh, civilian running shoes and whatnot. No, no, no. We have our proper British military World War I boots and our putties, so we shall be protected. I hope. Otherwise, it's going to be a it's going to be a long walk back. But we are thick in the wilderness. The the, the wilderness. The we're we're in the fields of Flanders somewhere. It's been downpouring, raining for days. The mud is just feet thick. Men are literally drowning in the mud. And we well, we're we're fresh recruits. We're just on the line. We we look so nice and neat and tidy in our uniform. We don't want to get anything dirty. The, the trousers they're so nice. Ah, but thankfully we will not be getting our trousers dirty because of our trusty old putties. So, we uh, make sure that they are nice and tightly tied, and, well, the column is marching through, so on we follow it. And with that, well, a little bit of water got into the left foot, but otherwise, the right foot is completely fine. And, and honestly, I think that the water getting a little bit in on the left-hand side of the left shoe, or the left foot, sort of like a little bit right here, but that's about it, is more to do with the fact that they're not very tightly laced as opposed to anything else. For the most part, completely dry. And again, the right foot is, there's, no, there's no water in there whatsoever. On the back of the legs, you can see, you know, a bit of a splash up there where normally that would be all the trousers getting dirty, but uh, they are nice and protected because of the putties, because of the leggings that I'm wearing. Let's see if we can find a bit more mud to trounce on through. Indeed, I can be stamping up and down in this sort of area, and indeed, there we are. What am I doing? There we have it. A little, a little bit more appropriate for the First World War, I think. Look at that. You see, the shoe itself, the actual boot, is completely covered, completely dark and blackened by all of the mess that I was just trouncing about in. Um, foot is a little moistened, but not all that much. Again, I think mainly due because of the fact that they're not entirely laced uh, very tightly, but uh, 
The actual trousers are completely protected, and what's most, most important of all is that my ankles and my feet are protected from any of that mud, any of that debris, from getting inside, because it's all nice and tightly wound. So with that now, I think the only thing really left to do is to head back over to my car. Uh, we can unwrap these putties, and you can see exactly how well they have held up against all of that terrible mud and uh, difficult terrain. World War, what do you expect? Right, so I'm back at the parking lot now, and uh, as you can see, we've uh, done quite a good job actually. A lot, lot better, honestly, than I anticipated we would at uh, getting ourselves all nice, muddied, and dirtied. But the real question remains is how well have the putties actually held up? Are my trousers underneath, and in fact, are the top of the boots well protected from all of that mud, debris, detritus, and all that other nonsense? Well, let's find out. I'll just untie it at the top here. This is the one benefit of putties as well, is that uh, they are relatively easy to take off, so long as you don't mind uh, having to rewind them up later on. Uh, and of course, when they're this filthy, well, I'll have to clean them off. And that is the thing as well, is that uh, it's much easier, I imagine, when you're in a field in campaign, a lot easier to clean off your putties than it is to clean off your actual trousers. You can see in a very fine line where the putties were overlapping one another and where they were not. Let's carry on. Uh, the number of people driving by who must be very uh, curious as to what's going on. I did pass a couple of people on the road when I was smashing through all the mud, and uh, I, I just offered a quick explanation. It, 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 it's for a World War One video. I'm like, all right, sure. And uh, would you look at that? A few little specks and spots of water, like little like droplets, as if it was as if we're like misting or something like that. A few of them, but for the most part, the trousers are completely and totally clean. Spick and span, ready for the parade. And what's more, take a look at that boot there. Again, you can see, can you even see the boot where you are? I don't know, I'll zoom in later on. Take a look at the boot there, you can very cleanly see the original color underneath, and then where the putties were lapping over top of it. So now, rather than having to explain to uh, Sergeant Major what happened to my beautiful government issue trousers, I only have to explain to him what happened to my less beautiful and certainly much cheaper and more disposable uh, government issue woolen straps uh, called putties. So uh, yes, indeed. Overall, I dare say, they work quite well. I'll give these a clean off, I'll give the boots a wash off, and I'll be good to go for the next event. So thank you all so very much for watching, of course in particular to my ever beneficent supporting classes on Patreon.com, whose financial support does indeed allow me to carry on doing crazy little things like this, making videos similar to this one. Uh, and then of course to you as well, my dear viewer. Thank you so very much for being here today. Of course, until the next time, I am and I shall remain your most humble and obedient of servants.